hello and welcome to my video once again whether you have found this video on youtube on facebook or on tiktok and irrespective of the time that you have found it uh salutations to you uh, compliments of the day today i want to quickly discuss with you in a uh, few short minutes how you can carry out qualitative analysis in R Studio, and that is how you can analyze open ended uh, data in a research situation using R, of course, R Studio. So, I went out to uh, interview a bunch of people in order to find out what their opinion is regarding this problem and uh, here is the problem the local and the question ask is what is the cost of banditry in Nigeria what is the cost of banditry in Nigeria let's jump right in so that we can see what their responses are and how we can go about uh, analyzing them using R or in our studio Okay, so now these are the data collected over here in uh, column A about, let me see, 520 responses, okay, 519 responses, and these have been assigned the following teams. There are about seven teams in all, and a lot of effort, time and energy was put into reading through each of these uh, responses to come up with which of the seven themes represents them. So what we are going to do now is that we are going to move these over to Notepad so that we can uh, save them in Notepad. I'm gonna find Notepad on this computer. Let me check. Okay. Fine. So this is Notepad. I'll open Notepad now. Notepad is opened. Guys, if you are enjoying what you have seen and you think that you are getting value so far, I'd encourage you to please subscribe to this channel and share this video with your friends. Leave me a comment. Or what you think I should have done or done better what you like about this video thank you very much so we're just going to copy the themes that each of these responses have been translated into and then we we'll bring that over to um, not bad paste them one each on a line so this is but these are the themes for each of the um, responses that was given. And so now we're going to save these in a desired location. So we're calling these, um, let's say, open U2. So open U2. So we have saved that file now. And uh, what we need to do, if we like, we'll close this and then we'll come over to R and uh, create a R markdown. To create R markdown, you click on this plus button and then come over to R markdown. I have decided that this R markdown is going to be in one document, so that's what we have. So uh, let's continue. Let's move on to something else. Right. Now, after setting a uh, working directory, writing setting a uh, set working directory, what I'm going, what I'm going to do is to introduce a new chunk code, uh, which is going to be R. So there, we are going to write uh, set working directory, just like this right 
this is what you do to set working directory. If we run it now, uh, the computer will recognize that uh, we have set working directory. Fine. The next thing we're going to do is to call um, call the library uh, tidyverse. Tidyverse. Okay. So to call the library tidyverse, we're also going to insert chunk code. And that you are just going to say uh, library simulators library library and uh, open then you type tidy words which is this then you run this code when you run this code you would have set working directory okay so the next thing we need to do now is to in uh, to import the data Type import the data, right? So we also introduce the chunk code R, and to import the data, let's say we're going to call it uh, responses, and that you assign a a vector, and that you call it you say read read lines okay read lines read lines we are now going to bring over the file name that we have saved earlier and i will call it open youth okay so open underscore youth that's what we are going to call and that will be inserted in a that will be in inverted commas. Uh, that will be in inverted commas, and uh, we we'll call it open underscore yut dot txt because this file is a txt file. Now we can import our data. All things being equal, our data would have come into R right we can check that here to see that all our codes are running perfectly okay so let's continue all right the next thing to do is to convert responses into a data frame remember before we can do that we must always uh, bring into existence a chunk code which is an R code now um, we're having this code says responses underscore df which means data frame using the function data dot frame we create um, responses which is equal to which is our response is equal to question one so obviously i'm going to change this over here and um, Question one, good. So we're having multiple questions in this uh, uh, research. This one, question one, great. And that is what we decided to do. And when we run this code, we'll be able to see if our code is functioning correctly. And obviously, it is functioning correctly. That's because after this, it's working perfectly. Then be sure that this also is working perfectly now that, that all those have been done we will now continue to the next step so guys the next thing to do now is to count the frequencies of each response uh not each response per se but each team so let me change it and say each team right and calculate their percentages of course, to do that, we must bring in uh, our chunk code. And here is the code that I've already prepared. This is because uh, I do not want us to waste too much of time. So, as you can see, the response counts is the table we want to prepare. Um, and then we're using response df, which is the one we got this line of code. 
then we are going to count responses. So we introduce uh, a new line there, uh, a new line of code there, all in the same chunk of code. We we'll count responses and then uh, rename team team equal to responses and then count is equal to the number of the teams. Right? So we now um, create also another column which we will call percentages and it's going to be the count divided by the sum of count that is 100 percent and then we're interested in arranging all of this in a descending order so that's the reason why we have arranged descending order over there so what do we do run this chunk of code and Voila, our code is operating correctly. Next thing we are now going to do is to simply print. We are going to now say um, print print uh, table. So to print the table as well as we have been doing, just as we have been doing, we need to say also introduce a new code. Um, and of chunk, chunk of uh, code there we will now say print right so I'm going to say print response counts this is the name of the table we are printing so we we'll do this and then we we'll run the code so you can see the themes have been calculated as we have here we are having uh, economic factors 87 uh, governance and institutional factors 87 none of these seem to have around the same percentages so this is the solution to our uh, our analysis so of the 560 something plus responses that we got we have one two three four five six themes um that shows i think there's supposed to be seven that shows the the uh the way the respondents presented their opinions so the next thing we now need to do let me just want to save this uh save this i'll save it and say open okay and then open and then the uh, car mark rmp so bring arm up down okay so then the only thing we need to do now is to need our code by clicking on this button needs so we wait for it it's going to generate for us the um the output and store it in the word documents so let's wait for it yeah so now it seems as if uh, the pirate markdown has been prepared so let's check it out yeah, you can see it was called version one and um, working directory all of the stuff that we did uh, now uh, here is a table that was created which uh, can effectively manipulate there is a table let me break out um, let's see let's see so here is our table. This is what was created. As you can see, these are the counts of each of the themes that were found in this particular research. Thank you very much for watching. If you like what I uh, presented in this content, please subscribe to this video, share it among your friends, and uh, leave me a comment in the comment section. I'll see you in the next one.